Hey everyone, Wizard here from Sathira Guides. So I've been wanting to do a Let's Play type series for a while, and Sathira would of course be the obvious choice for Sathira Guides, but there are a couple good options out there. BW did a very recent playthrough, Celix did one. So I decided to do a different Ambrosia game that I enjoy a lot, which is Frazzle's Wand. Now Frazzle's Wand also has a couple playthroughs. There's one that uh, Mission Delicious Cinnamon started, Habnabit did a speedrun part of the way, and Zerok actually has a full playthrough. I'll try to put links to all these uh, in the description. But I've not seen anybody that's gone level by level and really tried to explore the secrets and details of this game. So I'm going to try to do that. When I play through, there's a guide I follow written by Erica Marceau back when she worked at Mac OS Journal that I now archive on Sathira Guides. But it's a really useful reference. It covers a lot of the stuff in the game. So I pretty much followed that, and I thought, I might as well record it. Mostly, I kind of just wanted to play some Frazzles 1. This game was written by Ben Spees when he was at Ambrosia Software. And it was their first CD release. It came out in January of 2000. It was a pretty unique game at the time, I think. It was a Mac exclusive, like many Ambrosia games. And while it has some Super Mario-type vibes, I think it builds a really interesting atmosphere with the graphics and the music and effects. Yeah, and the features of the engine, too, are kind of interesting, as you'll see. So I, I hope you get the, the idea that it's something pretty special. I'm running this in Cheap Shaver, Mac OS 8.6, pretty much what was there at the time. Let's just start a new game. Alright, so we're just going to pick up here in the first level. Farazel is with his teacher, Gerodotus, here, as we'll learn in a moment. There's not a whole lot of exposition. The story isn't that expansive. It's mostly just a, you know, a side-scrolling platformer type game. So you control Farazzle here, this Habnabit character. I think he looks like he has a carrot for a nose, but they're kind of interesting people. Um, one of the fun things about them is their main interaction is through magic, so you can see I shoot fireballs. But the movement, running, jumping, everything is more or less how you'd expect. Um, but these levels scroll any direction. There's a lot of interesting things the environment can do that we'll get to see. All right, so let's go talk to Gerodotus here. Gerodotus, Gerodotus, oh no. Uh, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. My powers can keep me alive for a while. What happened? I, I went to investigate those strange noises. Evil creatures appeared, monsters the likes of which I have never seen. They attacked me. They left me for dead. There. Do you feel those tremors? The earth is shaking, Farazzle. We're lucky not to be caught in the worst of it. Some of the caverns have collapsed in on themselves. I can feel it in my bones. The main tunnel up above. I saw it. It's caved in. What kind of force could have done this? I have no idea. We're obviously under attack, but I don't know who would have a reason to attack us. It's been a long time since the Habnabits had enemies, maybe since the surface years. The surface years? You've never told me about any surface years. I didn't think you needed to know, but it's not important right now. This attack could not have come at a worse time. Our Zeridium supply is running low, and the mining party has not yet returned with more. Without Zeridium, we won't be able to use our magic much longer. What can we do? I am too weak to move. You must go out yourself and find out what's happened. But the main tunnel has collapsed. How can I get out? You must go down through the old escape passageway. I know I told you never to go there, but the time has come. All right, but I only know one spell. It will be dangerous, I know. But I can't be at your side forever, Farazzle. Be careful. Come back for me. So again, not a whole lot of exposition there. I think it's funny that the story is predicated on Farazzle and not really having gone much beyond this study area. Um, but there's a, a whole lot more to their caverns that they live in that we um, explore throughout the game. All right, so let's just pick up this magic potion here. That's how item pickup works. Um, all right. The sign reads, sparkly torches and rock piles contain bonuses. Shoot them with a fireball to grab the bonus. The sign reads, some walls can be destroyed. Try using some fireballs to break through. So this would be a good candidate here. You can see it falls apart when I shoot it with a fireball. 
And that previous sign told us that we can replenish our magic by shooting the sparkling torches. So there I get a magic crystal. You can see that now it no longer sparkles. Now I'll show you too another secret area. There's lots of secrets in this game. I think it makes it a lot of fun. Our uh, initial area was connected through the back here. Now these rocks also uh, contain magic or health. Alright, so that guy there, that's a spider. He's one of the common ones you'll see in a cavern. He falls from the ceiling. There we go. Alright, these gold zycrons, as they call them, they're, they're kind of a, a currency, I guess you could say, for later in the game. Early on we use the coins, but it's good to pick up the zycrons for points, and then uh, you need them to access later levels. So you see the water effects, the kind of the pseudo-physics forces here. It's a pretty powerful engine in this game. So here's a different guy. He uh, has a shield there, and he also tries to hit you with a sword. The sign reads, you can perform a spin jump by pressing the down and jump keys simultaneously. Spin jumps let you break through some floors. All right, let me get this cockroach. And then there's another secret area up here. I'm gonna try to get into that. There's a rock throwing creature. That's funny. Not a whole lot you can buy in this game. Uh, mostly potions, which we'll see in a moment. Alright, more Zycrons contribute to the points. Alright, All right, different guy here throws knives. The sign reads, caution, dangerous area ahead. Gadzooks, I'd better be careful. Okay, there's a, we get to use our spin jump here. That's more money. All right, so one thing I didn't show before, uh, these guys, they pretty much have to be shooting at you to be vulnerable, so I'm going to hit him back one. And now that he's behind his shield, uh, you'll see I can't really do anything to him. Um, but if I... Oh, I can get far enough over him. <laughs> he's going to dissolve in the cannon, I guess. Go ahead and take this money. So there's these platforms, the, and you probably noticed me swimming in the water when I wanted to get overhead, and there's a, a current here. And actually the, the body would have floated too. Everything in this game is kind of treated the same, like an object. Alright, let's go talk to Rajinko over here. But well, hello there, Mr. Magical. Looks like I have a new friend. I'm Rajinko. I like having friends, as long as they don't have big mouths. Know what I mean? <laughs> So what's cooking inside that cute little hooded cranium of yours? What are you doing here? Oh, you know, I just like hanging out in remote dead ends. <laughs> Trust me, I have my reasons. Got anything you might be willing to trade for? Ah, so it's a trade you're interested in, eh? Well, you might be in luck. I have a few items I've <clears throat> scavenged from around these parts. If you're interested in a health potion or a magic potion, I can do good by you. So this is Rajinko's main purpose. He sells you health and magic potions, and you can always come back to this level and buy them. Now, the limitations are pretty strict. You can only have, I think, two magic potions and one health potion. So I'm going to go ahead and buy those just to keep them on hand. They're useful to have, but they're not required. You can get by without them. Here you go. Let me tell you, you're going to be real happy with that purchase. Fill your magic power right up, it will. Run along now. All right, we have enough money. Let's go ahead and get the health potion, too. Well, hello there, Mr. Magical. I think he says the same thing every time. All right, got anything you might want to trade for, and this time we'll get the health potion. This potion will restore your health. It's a doozy, I gotta tell you, Buster. You have fun with it. All right, and then one more time, I'll just show the other conversation options. There's not really a whole lot of conversation in this game. It's mostly just plain. 
I don't associate with your kind. Hey, pal, you ought to zip that lip if you don't want the old dagger between the ribs treatment, okay? Now I should really be going. Fine, go on with your little life. And that is pretty much that. Okay, so here we see our first save. The saving in this game is not uh, traditional. You, it's a mechanic where you have to get to these green check boxes and save your game there. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's restart the playthroughs. I had a recording problem with my initial attempt, but I will replace those. Okay, so it seems like we have finished everything on the upper level, but remember the sign told us that we can spin jump down, and these Zycrons seem to suggest that's the direction to go. And indeed, we shall go down. Alright, so there's more to the level down here. Okay, so over here, we see some bricks that kind of failed, or fell as we walked across them. There's this, uh, this gap, this canyon, and then we have a door over there. We can actually run jump across, but we have to have a gold key to get across. So it's probably going to be on the other side. So I blew up a crate, picked up another item. This is a multi-crystal. Multi-crystals give you a multi-shot, so instead of shooting one fireball, I can shoot two now. Um, there's a bit of a problem with them. The, the magic flow is now twice as fast, but I can kill this guy with one hit, for instance. There's another save. Here's an invulnerability. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up and use it. Pretty useful to be able to walk across those spikes there. Now the multi-crystals uh, work until you get hit once, like that, uh, and then they, they shatter one at a time for each time you get hit. Let's see if I can shoot him at that angle. You can duck down and shoot lower that way. You can also hold up and shoot upward. Let's pick up this. body won't really decay, it's just kind of going to float there. Right. Let's go up. Those are larger health crystals. Okay, so we need to have the other key, so there's something else down here I need to pick up. I'm going to go ahead and save my progress again. Got the uh, platform up overhead. Some of these jumps can be a bit tricky. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Okay, that's the key I need. Let's go all the way back. This time, yeah, so we got the silver key to get to the gold key, and now 
we have the key to the door. Okay, so rather than going away, uh, going out directly, I have the key to open that door. I'm actually gonna climb down the wall here and try to do this carefully. Because it's actually not instant death. Some of the drops are. This one has spikes at the bottom. And if I jump to the other side, I'm gonna do it successfully. Um, there's actually a little secret area down here with some money. Okay, this time I try to get the other side. Okay, so that should be everything in this level. You get this little um, summary. Okay, so now we finished the first level, we get to the world map here, and this is where we get to move around among all the levels as we unlock them. So uh, next we'll pick up in the central caverns.